Hello. Good morning. Everyone. Let's close that. And that. There you go. Oh. Oh, I need to get something. I'll be right back. Hope y'all can hear me. Let me just check whether my volume, yeah, should be good. I think my camera is a little tilted, so I will get started soon. And correct the angle of my camera. When I'm doing lives is kind of not too hard but at the same time there's always the you know setting up the cameras and doing everything always takes a little longer than I would like it would be easier if I just purchased a bunch of stands and a bunch of cameras and just placed them everywhere but then I don't want to be want to have the entire house surrounded with cameras okay I think I got everything As you can see, my mugs are all made from slabs. They are not going to be perfectly round. But I do try to make them as round as I can. Lots of knit mugs, uh, some specialty mugs too, like this particular one. This, if uh, some of you remember, not from last year but the year before, was my was my business's uh, 15 year anniversary. The way I celebrated the anniversary was basically it was 15 years. Uh, from the very first time 
I put my work out in the public for purchase. It was my first show. Now it's been almost 17 years. But um, over the years I have made several mugs, many different texture patterns and what I wanted to do was make a mug that represented all the different textures in one. So this was that mug. And yeah, I just made a limited edition of these mugs. I'm making only one more right now. And I hope it survives its firing because it would be super annoying if it doesn't. How's everyone's Friday coming along? Not that it matters much, but it is the weekend. Embroidery pattern mugs. I will have, I need to make two for an order for a custom request, and I think I have only two more extras which probably will be glazed in the same honey glaze.
I'm working more at my normal speed today rather than chit chatting a lot and slowing everything down just want to get these done um, a few more things to get done today in the studio and then I want to play with something new Many more to go. So I'm off screen but I'm just setting these mugs out on the table, on the shelf. So I just need to round off the tops. Remind these mugs that they need to look round. So sorry I can't be on the screen. If you're watching, hold on, I'll be right there. So those are seven mugs done. the rest. Are those mugs in there? Fire. No, those are small dishes. I have those mugs, these mugs. Okay. Alright, I'm back in view.
some very quiet Friday looks like. I see people joining in. Not much chatting going on today. I hope you all are busy doing whatever making the most of the summer we are having or winter or wherever you might be Hi Debbie. Alright, you can always watch later. It's always there on my Facebook page. Thanks for saying hi. just put the same video on loop and I'll be doing the exact same thing <laughs> I will be making I need two yarn bowls which need to be done. So I will be doing those in this session. So there will be that. But mostly it's all the knit mugs. one in this pile. Sometimes you just feel a foreign object which you don't want as part of the clay.
11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 14, 14 more marks, 14 and 11 is 25, out of which, 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Around 50% of them are spoken for. Today after I've done a certain amount of work in the clay studio I would like to start on a fiber project uh, any guesses what that might be After I finish marks today, I plan on doing a fiber related project, a little different than what I have done in the past. Um, it's going to be uh, some weaving, hopefully. And I have woven in the past on my floor loom, however. Um, you know, just basic weaves and twill patterns, very structured, uh, some, some crazy stuff as well, but not too crazy. However, this time around, I hope, uh, I can get a little crazy with my weaving and to represent the crazy times we are living in, right? So I came across uh, Sauri weaving and I mean I'd heard of it before as well and I always 
loved seeing the projects uh, done by people from it and I, I like how expressive it is in a different form other than painting or with clay or anything else it was with fiber but a more impress uh, expressive form like there were no real rules to follow except the rule that you need to do whatever you wish to do you can represent yourself your past your present your future your state of mind everything in fiber in this golden structure so i thought now is as good time as any to play around with that I'm hoping uh, today I can get started on that project. Uh, yeah. So I'm hoping I can get started on that and um, at least prep up my warp and see if I can dress the loom. I did clean up my loom. It was you know, getting dusty sitting behind the couch. So I pulled it out. It had a warp already on it, which I cleaned up. Hey, Anne, you need one of those beautiful mugs. <laughs> yes. You can definitely place an order for them. Uh, these mugs, um, around half of them are for orders and uh, the remaining half will be available for purchase and they will be uh, ready to ship out within a two week period and most of them are the stock in it. I also have some lace ones but I also have some lace ones already ready to ship in my shop. Have you started spinning that bat yet? I'm just curious to know. There is no pressure of course. So let me, I need another board and then here it is. So yeah, have you started spinning on the bat? So most of our mugs do start off as slabs. Oh cool. Oh custom skein. That is neat. I have always uh, had this feeling about doing custom work, even for pottery. It always, towards the end of it, I'm always like, okay, never again. Because it lands up being so much more work. So. Or if I do any kind of custom work, I usually don't even take money up front, assuming the fact that it's not going to go the way the person is expecting it. I just do it if it's interesting enough as a challenge for me. So sometimes I do that. But of course, if it's a bigger project, then I need some sort of commitment. But uh, more often than not, it's not. Uh, it's never appealed to me. But I have done custom stuff. Yeah, you have to be selective. That's true. Well, but that's exciting. And... Uh, I 
after I get done with the clay studio today uh, my plan is to try something new yeah it's always nice to sell existing items that's true so do you sell a lot of your hands fun I've just started to dabble into selling. <laughs> no, it's piling up. Yeah. And that's what I realized when I got my drum carder, which you very wonderfully guessed the date it would arrive here. Um, I was like, hey, cool. Now I have a drum carder. I can card all the bats and stuff which I have in my mind to uh, make and then spin up I can make all of those and then as you know very soon realize I needed room for the fiber that need to go into the bats uh, the plain fiber the dyed fiber all of that uh, all the different add-ins that I wanted to do I needed room for that I needed room for the resulting bats right I needed room for the resulting hand spun yarn from those bats that is if I was going to spin all of them which I'm coming to realize I, I cannot spin all the yarn from all the bats that I make um, in addition I already had a whole bunch of other bats from other fiber artists so at some point I need to spin those I need room for those as well plus I had a whole bunch of hand spun yarn not a whole lot means it, it was a big bin of uh, of regular hand spun yarn by regular I mean either two ply or three ply just you know very traditional hand spun and I had a whole big bin of um, hand spun art yarns coils and super coils and core spun and auto wrapped stuff and all of that and uh so those i still have but then the new stuff i was making i was like okay, you know what i i started experimenting with or just putting them on my website or seeing getting feelers if people are interested so i have put out some and people have purchased them which is nice <laughs> you have enough fiber and stash for all your lifetimes i i always feel the same way but now when i'm making bats it gets it gets a little confusing because bats is so much like um like fiber bats it's so much like cooking where you need all these different ingredients in order to make something so i might have a whole bunch of fiber but if it's not the right uh if like if it's not the right meat or the right spices or the right kind of flavoring and stuff it just doesn't turn out right so for that now you need to purchase all these individual ingredients for your bad food that's what i call it and uh then once you start doing that it's it gets a little carried away so yeah i would have enough fiber to do all the things but then many times i go like oh i want to make this bat in so and so textures or representing a certain picture i just go like uh actually mm, i don't have that yarn oh i wish i had some silk for this Oh, but I don't have it in that color, so I should get some and then, you know, dye it to get the right colors. Then, if you're a person like me, you'll get into this whole experimental stage of testing every color that you can dye with the dyes that you have. Then you'll end up buying more yarn or fiber in order to experiment all the dyeing. And once you figure that out, then you buy more fiber so that you can dye it in the colors that you actually want 
and then you make the bats <laughs> then in this whole process yes you land up with a lot of fiber and a lot of stuff but i am enjoying i'm glad that i did get the drum carder because um if i like spinning just from straight top as well but um it sometimes does get boring yeah and it's nice if you can give it to friends who you know appreciate it and will use it in ways so hello hello birding mom yeah it's nice to have and then it's usually like sometimes i have a very particular project in mind or a certain color that i want and uh it's uh, i'm the more i'm playing with the carder i'm realizing it's easier for me to form new colors by mixing different fiber colors together and shift the shade one way or the other um it could be you know shifting color or just shifting lightness and darkness oh thank you i'm glad you're enjoying the ig posts and i have a bunch of videos made for all the bats i've made they just need editing and going out there and so slowly i'll get around to do it but yeah like if i'm just dyeing fiber it gets into a very exact recipe and then sometimes it turns out to be the color you want sometimes not and sometimes even though the wet fiber is looking the right color but after you have dye set it and stuff the color shifts or the application is not even if you want it even so there's a lot of that but then with a the drum carder you can actually kind of you know take the two colors and mix them in different proportions and shift the color from one spectrum to the other and if you want to add textured elements you can do that if you want to add noils to add a pop of something you can do that so it's kind of like painting in a way which is a part i'm liking about it so then if i really want a fiber of a certain color to make a yarn of a certain color for a certain project i can kind of play around with the drum carder to achieve that so i'm not dependent on you know just all the dyed tops i have so all not all of them but several of the fiber tops that i have i have split them up into sections into different colors they are not like the single braid that you normally see um some of them of course i have kept them as it is and of course if it is uh some really nice fiber i have uh like few braids of pulworth silk some yak and silk and all of that those are kept all nice but stuff like you know 100% merino or falkland and things like that yeah i play around with it and mix the colors up if it's 100% wool i'll just play with it and of course i dye as well so sometimes i will dye the braid in different colors or sometimes i just mix it up my favorite fibers if i'm spinning just top as it is uh my favorite i like blends i like uh targi bamboo silk is one of my favorites pulworth silk is one of my favorites as well or if i'm and even merino silk i like that too i'm not very fond of merino spinning as a top because of the short staple length but if it's mixed with silk i don't mind it i do prefer pulworth silk over merino silk um when it comes to bats i do like uh merino for that i like almost any fiber um so for that yeah targi i i do like just for spinning if spinning top or even in bats or whatever i do like targi a lot it's such a plump fiber 
and just has so much bounce and life to it i really like that and uh, also the other one yeah, i like pullworth pullworth silk is nice because pullworth is so much like merino except that it has a longer staple length which is what i like about pullworth and then of course when you have pullworth with silk it's just the color just shines my draft preference in spinning is i do a short backward uh the short forward i find it very tedious to do um i like short backwards uh, for when i'm spinning top so you know i still get a pretty even yarn and I just go, I, I, from the orifice, I'll go back all the way to my hips, going short backwards, and then I'll just feed in the yarn to the bobbin. And with bats, mostly I do either art yarns, means I've spun regular yarn also from them, but again, if I'm doing regular yarn, I'm just doing short backwards. If I'm doing art yarns, I would prefer to have 20 hands for doing it because I like complex yarns and two hands is not enough for making art yarns. It is, but it would be so much more fun if I had 20 hands. Yeah, especially when I'm doing things like auto wrapping with core spinning and then doing a silk glaze over it or super coiling it and everything i want one hand to hold every different i want one hand to hold the bat one hand to draft the fiber one hand to hold the core one hand to hold the auto wrap one hand to direct the auto wrap in a certain direction to wrap it or do something and if i'm doing coils on it yeah another hand to mix coils on it like beehives and stuff so yeah, it's never enough. And there are just so many different options available, like what you can do. So and I want to experiment with everything. Yes, we crafters never have enough hands. So rightfully said. And not enough time. It's not just the hand. How long have I been spinning? I started spinning uh, 2016. So not very long. Three, three and a half years. I know it was towards the end of 2016 or so. So it's not been very long and there was also not a real intent to spin. I actually wanted to weave really bad and I don't know if you have heard the story before so sorry if it's a repeat but yeah it's long enough that I've been spinning. <laughs> it's long enough for me to be addicted to it but, uh, but yeah I wanted to actually weave and um, I got a flow loom and it took me a year to convince my wife that I needed a flow loom in the house. I had a table loom but it was just not satisfying enough for me. Um, so yeah you never stop learning that's the main thing. Yeah, so I got the floor loom and uh, got it in the house and, you know, we had to get rid of one couch to make room for it and everything was all good. I would not even warped the loom or anything and I'd gone on a men's uh, knitting retreat, which happens close to my place in the month of September. And uh, when I went there, uh, you know, I... <laughs> spoke to some people that I was very excited that I got a new loom well new to me loom it was from Craigslist and uh, it's a 36 inch 
uh, Leclerc, uh, you know the one from Canada, I'm probably pronouncing the name incorrectly. It's a four harness, 36 inch loom. So I was all excited, mentioning to everyone that, hey, I have a new tool, I'm excited to use it, blah, blah, blah. And um, at the end of the retreat, one of my friends there asked me to open my van up and he loaded up his spinning wheel in there. And I was like, why are you giving me a spinning wheel? And he's like, oh, you need to learn how to spin now. I'm like, no, I don't want to learn how to spin. I got a loom, which I'm very excited to learn. And I will be, um, you know, I have so much of yarn. The purpose of getting the loom was to use up all the yarn I had been purchasing and it was all, you know, sock yarn and whatever yarn that I was purchasing for knitting earlier. And I was like, no, I kind of want to use all of that. And he was like, well, once you're a weaver, you kind of need to learn how to spin. And I couldn't, I didn't, it didn't make any sense. I'm like, no, weaving takes up so much yarn. Why would anyone want to go through the trouble of spinning their own yarn? when there is just so much yarn available and so much yarn in my stash itself. Why would I want to create more yarn? Plus it meant that I had to now start stashing up fiber and stuff. So I, I was not impressed with the idea of weaving, uh, of spinning at all, but he still insisted on uh, giving me the wheel for a year. He's like, you can keep it for a year and you can decide. And I was like, sure, but not interested. And he, the, the wheel was kept in my van for almost um, almost a month. Because I was even afraid to bring it home. First of all, it would take room. I had just convinced my wife that I wanted the loom. So I was like, I can't have another toy in the house. So finally, after a month or so, a friend of mine told me, hey, come over, I've got some fiber. Why don't you at least sit on the spinning wheel and see whether you like it or not? I was like, yeah, sure. And there was almost like an instant connection I made with it, which is quite surprising, you know, going with such a negative frame of mind that, oh, I don't want to spin. Don't want another hobby. Famous last words, like you said. And, um, and yeah, I sat on the wheel and I, uh, he had to set up the tension and, you know, um, the treadling and all that stuff a little bit to make sure it was running fine. It needed to be oiled really bad, which he helped me do. And then, um, and then I spun on it and it was, you know, it was like swimming. Like I kind of just knew how to do it. I won't say swimming, like walking. I, because I had been spinning on a wheel, uh, like, you know, I used to throw on the wheel, the potter's wheel. And so it was, a very hand foot coordination which I was very familiar with so I didn't have any trouble as such starting off and um, yeah I think it was probably October or November of 2016 the inquisitive mind yes Leslie oh Leslie I have your mug in the making your special mug in the making and of course the knit mug too but uh, I'm making only one of the anniversary mug for you
Yeah, so I just kind of took to it and then within, I think within two days I had spun up four ounces of a braid like and uh, I still have that yarn with me and actually I have, I was, when I was like organizing my stuff for the drum carder I went through all my hand spun yarns and I saw it and you know, I, I will admit and say that it's actually not bad. I still think it was pretty good yarn. Like usually you go and go look at your very first skein and go like, okay, that was crazy. It's not that crazy. It has a little less ply twist in it. And I was just like, you know what? I should just spin it through the wheel again and add a little ply twist to it and it'll be fine. Uh... But that's like the only thing and of course you know it's a little thick and thin in places some places it has a little extra twist but overall it still looks like very usable yarn for maybe weaving or even knitting so and then of course the rabbit hole just got deeper very quickly then i think it was within a month itself that I just started purchasing fiber like nobody's business and spinning. So yeah, Leslie, your mug is in the making. And if there are no hiccups, it will all work out fine this time. And if I can program my brain as to doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So most of your stuff is spindle spun. Yeah, you should pull your wheel out. I, so I, when the very first attempt or my introduction to spinning was the drop spindle and I didn't take to it at all. I couldn't get it. That's the other reason why I was so much opposed to spinning. Because, you know, uh, drop spinning doesn't have foot and hand coordination, which I was more familiar with. And so I tried drop spinning, uh, spinning, I didn't get it. And then, like I told you about my wheel story, that's how, that I just took to instantly and I fell in love with it. And then almost uh, seven or eight months later, I tried uh, drop spinning. uh more spools no i uh i what i do is i use um i do have like two um bobbins for my um hansen uh which are 3d printed the acre works one and i have one uh two jumbo ones for my lendrum wheel one of them which is a 3d printed one one is a regular one and then I have several of the regular Lendrum bobbins, uh, the wooden ones. And uh, But what I do is I do spin quite a lot, but I don't ply right away. Most of the time what I do is um, I will put them, um, I will just wind them on storage bobbins. And I have several of those. Those are those cardboard storage bobbins. <laughs> you're here to remind me of what I'm doing with my marks yes when I when I start glazing you have to remind me what colors to put them in before I forget oh you have a lendrum too yeah I like that wheel I use a lendrum mostly for my art yarns I just have the jumbo bobbin on it on which I can do those big chunky fat yarns and you know I like the more control of a treadle wheel when I'm doing art yarns and on my Hansen I mostly do uh, traditional yarns or you know I use it for plying regular yarns uh, as well but most of my um, spinning art yarns is all done on the lender and the other thing uh, oh I was talking about uh, so almost after a year of me having the spinning wheel is when I started, uh, I experimented with drop spinning after, you know, a big gap and I absolutely loved it this time. I finally got the concept of drafting and everything with the wheel 
and this time it was no trouble for me to get started spinning so i got a few uh turkish spindles is what i started with and then i got one drop spindle which i absolutely love and since the start of this year i was like okay one drop spindle is not enough i need more and i didn't get much of a chance to select one at red order which was madrona fiber festival so i thought oh this year at black sheep gathering i'm gonna get another drop spindle and you know start collecting some more yeah it's supplying you get lazy with for me it's not the getting lazy with it's more like it feels like the um like the final yarn is done like i can't make choices so if i don't know what i want to do with the yarn i don't like to ply it like if i know exactly what i want to do with a particular yarn or if i have a project in mind i kind of like going through my single bobbins and then put them together to make the yarn that i need for the project that i need oh drafting is what got you yeah drafting is fun it's the the whole process is just just uh, seeing that fiber get a twist in it and become yarn that is very pleasing yeah so th so that's what it is it's that indecisive nature right like what's the best way to ply it up to use up and see i i don't i don't know if you do a lot of art yarns and stuff right if you're doing spinning not many people do art yarns on drop spindles but um but that's the other thing it's like if you're really into making art yarns you could do so much more with just plain singles uh you know auto wrapping and all that kind of stuff that i just feel like i just want to keep them till i know what exactly i want to do with them yeah with respect to playing with color and things like that and every now and then yeah i do like to make regular yarn as well i like to do regular plain spinning as well so i do that the very recent project that spinning thing that i'm doing on the hansen i'm really enjoying which i earlier thought that i might land up getting bored with it but it's not boring at all is um spinning with uh minis these are the minis from into the world uh and it's just such a fun experience so these are the minis i won from uh jillian's uh newsletter jillian reynos so she had a newsletter poll on something about classes and i took part in it and i won a lot of fiber and it's almost i think she sent me a pound of it or so of minis it's just tiny little minis and each one of them i think is just a quarter ounce or something tiny tiny bumps of fiber all different colors all different fi I means not all different but it's a mix of fiber content different colors uh it it is mostly on the cooler shades because you know that's how uh into the world colors are they are mostly all blues and purples uh with few yellows and reds and oranges in it but it's mostly blues purples with a lot of white in it as well uh it kind of off balances and makes the colors light and dark good color play in them so i've just been spinning yes jillian is very generous that is true yeah i think she had posted that it was the person would win eight ounces of fiber and when i got it i didn't even bother weighing it because it looked like so much and i was like oh wow that's eight ounces and i was just you know i posted online and i said 
yay, I won the 8 ounces of minis and everything. Then she sent me another private message saying that, you know, it's actually more than a pound that you got. <laughs> I was like, really? And then I did weigh it and yes, it was more than a pound. So I have been enjoying spinning that and it is, I've been spinning it really fine, which also is something I usually don't do. I usually spin, you know, around uh, like a DK worsted weight. This might be close to a fingering weight. But uh, I'm spinning it really fine. Again, I don't have a real plan of how I'm going to use a cup because it's all different colors and, you know, different fibers all mixed in. I have one idea um, which I'm very tempted to do but I think I want to do my so it's uh, what I'm thinking about is doing a weaving project with it rather than a knitting project with it so basically use it as warp and as weft and like whatever random like I'll just apply it into a two ply and just weave it uh, so all the colors will mix up there'll be a lot of color play and it'll kind of be all over the place but i think that's fine i think i will enjoy a project like that with because right now it just you know what else can you do with such a big jumble of colors I can do a blanket or a cowl or something like that but that just doesn't feel very satisfying right now plus I don't want to sit with anything in my lap like my knitting projects are really not getting much time these days because it's so warm oh yes Yani texture is like the very first book that I purchased when I got into spinning it was her book and, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting her name. Starts with S. Sarah Anderson's. Um, the Spinner's Design Book or something it's called. That was the next book I purchased. And then right after that, so this is a period of a month or so, right? Got these two books. And then it was... Um, Purchasing J.C. Bog uh, Faulkner's class on Craftsy. So she had the Woolen to Worsted class and she had a Art Yarn class, which kind of just blew my mind away. And after a month or two of spinning, I was like, I want to make Art Yarns. And I was trying so bad to make it on that borrowed wheel that I had, the Ashford Traditional. Oh, it was, it was tough. It wasn't easy to do. Yeah, and then I got JC Boggs book and I have her interweave class as well. And it was just fun. And then uh, just recently I got, um, <coughs> Uh, Jazz Turtle, uh, Esther Rogers uh, uh, DVD as well on, uh, you know, spinning locks and things like that. And I had her crafty class on making art bats and fiber prep as well. So that was very interesting. There's just so many resources, which is good. Yeah, Esther is amazing. Casper, come inside. So exciting for Casper. All right, Leslie, thank you for checking in, making sure I'm making a mug. Yeah, yes, so, so uh, did I tell you about my next project which I'm attempting 
I'm gonna at least start today or at least thinking of starting today. I haven't shared with social media yet. So I will be. Okay, so, um, hi, Casper, you're back. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to attempt to do this is after watching Esther Rogers since her name came up. Uh, I got reminded. That I didn't mention it probably while you were online. Uh, I want to try my hand at uh, salary weaving. I hope that's the way you see it. But um, yeah, I means I had like I said I've done some weaving like that loom, the floor loom which came. I think I did only two projects in it. And like I said, I started off by saying that that's what I want to do. I want to weave. I don't want to spin. But uh, spinning took much of a hold, and now that I have all this yarn and I'm making all these crazy art yarns and everything, uh, just doing regular weaving with them was kind of feeling like I I had a warp on my floor loom for more than a year. Like I put that warp on uh, last year in June, and I had all wound it on the back beam. But I had not passed it through the heddles because, uh, you know, means it was nice and colorful and everything. It was all uh, crochet cotton, different colors, you know, mixed in and everything for the purpose of making placemats. And, you know, very regular weave structure, probably like a twill pattern or something like that. And every time I'd, I'd not even started doing it, I still had to put the warp thread through the heddles. And every time I thought of it, I went like, this is going to be so boring. Like, even though the colors are exciting and everything I said, and I had eight yards of it ready to weave. And I think I had put on only like maybe five or six yards on the back beam and the rest of the, you know, warp was just hanging down. And every time I said that, oh, but this is going to be so boring to weave. I'll get bored after doing like two placemats. So it was just not seeing the light of day and uh, more than a year has passed. So now chit chatting with Esther and you know, making all these art yarns and then making all these fiber bats. I was like, maybe I should try my hand at Sauri weaving. It sounds more interesting. I just received the book yesterday on Saori weaving and I um, so I like the concept of it which I thought I'd understood earlier as well so that wasn't very new look at this mug these these, these slabs need to rest up a little bit see when the clay is too wet it just doesn't want to cooperate it. So this is uh, I'm forgetting the name of the title. It's the purple book, which is the popular Saori weaving uh, free innovation or something like that. It's called. It's upstairs right now. Otherwise, I would go check for you. But it's like the one main book which everyone talks about for Saori weaving, apparently. And it's called the Purple Book. That's the other thing I heard. So I did get that book. And uh, so the concept of it, which I thought what it was, is kind of what it is. It was nice to read about that. And there is less in terms of I means there is technical information but that was the kind of stuff i already knew so i'm like okay but i like the concept of it that it's not so much about 
creating a finished piece or something like that. It's more about being in the moment, weaving whatever you want that's right in front of you rather than thinking that, oh, I'm doing a gradient, so I need to use this yarn. Oh, I need to do this weave structure or this is, you know, going to be for this particular thing or whatever. It's just kind of expressing yourself, expressing your state of mind. You could be expressing your past, your present, your future, whatever you want in fiber and yarn and it could be with anything. You could put pieces of twigs in the weaving if you wanted to. Uh, you know, it seems like a very expressive form. So I'm kind of thinking I will enjoy that more than regular weaving. So last uh, few days back, I did remove all that. Hello, exotic kitty. You always join in when I'm almost going to wrap up. Almost. I'm not wrapping up yet. But, um, but yeah, so I uh, went ahead and I removed that old warp from the loom. I'm doing good. I'm making marks today and we're talking about weaving because that's what's on my mind. These slabs are little on the wet side. He slept in too much, which is fine. We all have those days. I didn't sleep at all actually last night. I probably must have slept for an hour or two. Some of it was probably the excitement of starting on a new fiber craft like weaving. But so, and in case you're wondering who I'm talking to you, uh, this is somebody on Twitch. So when there are people on Twitch don't know that I'm talking to people on Facebook at the same time. And people on Facebook don't know that I'm talking to people on Twitch. Um, oh, yeah. I know when that happens, you get those weird sounds and your house and then you don't get sleep because you think there's a ghost <laughs> yeah so I have a feeling I didn't sleep mostly because I was a little excited about starting on a new adventure with um, with some more fibery goodness so so that's why that didn't happen But so I'm hoping today I, I did uh, pull together a bunch of my yarns, what I want to use as my warp and what I want to use as weft. I kind of have a color scheme going, but you know, it can change while I'm weaving. So currently I kind of have picked out all different textures and yarns in a similar or a color scheme that will kind of go together so i just kind of pulled all of that together how i'm going to weave all of them together i don't know exactly but i think i'm going to warp up i don't know maybe five yards or four yards not more than 15 or 18 inches wide of warp and then just play with it so it wasn't the cat so it's definitely got to be a ghost then that's my immediate conclusion if it's not the cats it must be the ghost or if it's not the dog in my case oh well happy belated birthday Birthdays, I think, are overrated. Well, at least you got birthday cake, so then that's good. Yay! 
you see, we got a donation as well. So that's good. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm too old to enjoy birthdays anymore. But this was actually the first year after many uh, that I got. Uh, I wasn't at a show during my birthday. Because mine comes uh, mid mid June, and uh, I'm usually at the Edmonds Arts Festival every year. So for the last ten twelve years, I've always had my birthday at that show, and uh, it's been uh, it's always hectic. I usually don't take any personal calls people keep texting me and messaging me oh, but so he was gone for work yeah so you just celebrate it in your own way but this year it was weird for me because I was at home and then I was like can't, can't have a party it's not that I'm a big party person anyway, but still. It was weird that after all these years, I finally have a birthday while I'm at home, and there's nothing I can do. big jumbo mugs I've left them out to set up a little bit because they are too wet for me to try making right now oh yeah Facebook people post on the page yeah I have that people do post out there but then I have a lot of family from India and stuff too so they all want to wish me so they are the ones who keep making phone calls and when I'm at a show I really cannot chat with people on the phone so I keep ignoring their messages and um, and then I get start getting text messages which also I have to ignore and usually I do all my transactions on the phone when I'm at a show so people are you know signing in and they are reading all my birthday wishes and it gets really funny because they're like hey it's your birthday and I'm like uh, yes it is but please do make sure you sign <laughs> Because I need your, your credit card information more than I need wishes right now. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, I have two yarn moves that I need to work on. So, let me start that right now. Or dad forgot. Yeah, people forget birthdays. I don't hold it against anyone for forgetting a birthday. It's, it is what it is. Because I forget birthdays all the time. Tomorrow happens to be my mom's birthday, so I need to. I have to keep reminding myself today to make sure I call her. And she really likes when people wish her and she gets very upset if people haven't wished her. She might as well call me today to remind me that it's her birthday tomorrow. So that's always interesting too. She's like, hey. Hope you haven't forgotten. But you say something like, I don't have any plans for tomorrow. I'm bad with names too. I used to be very good at names and I used to be good at remembering people, especially at shows and stuff. I would remember people. I would remember what they purchased from me the last year and everything. But the more and more shows you keep doing, the harder it gets.
or your fiance's mom like cards and she gets upset if you walk into the side of her. Oh god. Yeah, my my mom's not so much into the cards thing, but she definitely wants a phone call. She also gets upset if you forget somebody else's birthday. So it was my brother's birthday uh, on Sunday last week. Last Sunday, this last Sunday, yeah. And um, we didn't have power for some reason at home. So I didn't want to, you know, do FaceTime conversations and drain out my phone completely because that was like kind of like the only communication we had but um at f and we got our power at around 334 and like right at 4 15 i receive a phone call from her she's like it's almost evening and you still haven't called your birthday what's wrong why can't you just call him quickly so it's like we didn't have power why don't you have power what's wrong i'm like we don't know what's wrong we just got power I need to fill gas, I need to do these few things today, and then I will call them in the evening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what birthdays really celebrate, but trip around the sun. I'm not a big birthday person. That's for sure. Even as a kid growing up, I celebrated a lot of my birthdays in the um, in the plane because our school ended for a summer vacation very close to my birthday or on the same day, and. Uh, we usually used to fly to India at that time, on that particular day, as soon as school ends. So, I have celebrated many birthdays in the plane. It's like, oh, whatever. Oh, Dairy Queen ice cream cake. Oh, that sounds nice. I, I am a big sucker for ice cream. You could put ice cream in anything and I'll have it. And ice cream cake does sound very delightful and worth celebrating. Like, I would celebrate an ice cream cake day than a birthday but if i have to celebrate my birthday just to have ice cream cake i'll do that too that's where my priorities go as far as ice cream and birthdays go on these because these do seem a little bit on the stiffer side and then once the mugs are ready the big jumbo mugs then I can form these with the jumbo mugs and right now it's 12 43 my time and I'm getting hungry for some lunch so I'm going to go ahead and do that so thank you for joining me today and hope this was fun no matter for how short a time you were here, I was here for approximately an hour and a half. That is, that was good enough. So, take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye Anne. Bye Exotic Kitty.
to confine your yarn well go find it see you later <laughs> bye